Today in our 2017 Nissan Rogue, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Curt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness with Full Pole Flat Trailer Connector. And that's going to be part number C56033. So here's what our wiring is going to look like. It is going to provide us with a Full Pole Flat Trailer Connector, and it's going to provide us with all of our required lights to get down the road safely, such as our tail lights, brake lights, and our turn signals. Our wiring is going to stay on the inside of the car until we're ready to use it, and when we do want to use it, we can simply drop out the length of four pole wire right by our hitch. And since we have this nice weather stripping here, so long as we stay away from the actual latch of our hatch, we'll be okay. Then we just drop it out, close the hatch, and then we have plenty of length of wire to hook up to our trailer. And whenever we're finished towing and we're not using our wiring, it'll conveniently stow underneath the compartment, nice and out of the way. Now our wiring is a custom wiring kit, so it is made specifically for your Rogue. Now we're only gonna have a few connections to make behind the taillights, but it's gonna be on the inside panels, so we're gonna have to remove some of the interior panels in the back of our hatch. There's not gonna be any kind of cutting or splicing into our factory wires, so there's just gonna be a simple plug-in installation, and we're just gonna have to run a hot lead up to the battery. So now that we've seen what our wiring looks like in the end result, and gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, we're gonna have to come to our rear hatch, and we're gonna open it up so we gain access to the wiring and our tail lights. Now we're gonna to wanna to remove all the floor coverings out of the back. We're gonna set them aside for right now. Now right on the inside of our threshold, right towards the edge on either side, we're gonna have a push pin fastener that's holding it in place. Now I'm gonna grab a flathead screwdriver and there's gonna be a small notch that you can get underneath the center section first and we're gonna pop that out and that's gonna relieve the tension on the clip and then we can pop the rest of it out. And we'll remove the other one on the other side as well. So now we can come to the corner edge of our threshold and you're gonna to wanna to lift up and unclip the clips going along the edge here and once you get one side unhooked, you're going to want to go to the other side and kind of work your way towards the center. And once you have that unhooked, there's going to be a plastic piece right here. And you just grab a screwdriver again and just pop that center section out so we can take it all the way out. And then we're going to lift the threshold up and we'll set this aside. Now also on either side, we're going to have our tow hooks. I want to flip the tow hook up so we can gain access to that cover right there. And behind there, that's gonna be the fastener that's holding it in place. Just take a flathead screwdriver and pop it up. And we're gonna to need to remove the bolt right there. We'll grab a 10 millimeter socket and can pull that bolt out. And the whole tow hook assembly will come out with it. And we'll do that for the other side as well. Now if we move towards the front of the vehicle, we'll notice that there's gonna be a small circle plastic cover there, there's going to be another bolt holding that panel in place. So again, just want to take a flathead screwdriver, try to get on the outside of that cover and get underneath the edge of it so that we can pop it out. So we're going to take our 10 millimeter socket and remove that one as well. Now there is going to be one on the other side too. Now we can start to begin to remove the panel or at least flex it out a little bit. Now I'm gonna be using a plastic trim panel tool so I don't damage the plastic on the inside. You're just gonna to wanna to pull the weather stripping away slightly so that you can get your tool in there. You're gonna to wanna to get underneath the panel and slowly start working your way up and prying away. And it'll start releasing some of those clips. Once you have a few of them released, you just want to start working your way down and across so that we can get access back here. And once you have it pretty loose to where you can get access to back here, we're going to go ahead and do that on the other side too. Now if you can get your hand back there with this much room, you can go ahead and continue or 
if you need a little bit more room and so you can see a little bit better, I'm gonna come a little bit farther inside the compartment here and we're gonna have another round circle. That's gonna be that cover again. There's gonna be another bolt as well as another cargo hook that we can take off. Now, just so you can see a little bit better, I did remove this panel. You don't need to remove this for the installation, but there's just a few uh, tabs that you can pull on and it'll come right out. So if we come to the very back of the vehicle, we'll find this connector right here, and that's gonna be for our taillight harness. Now to disconnect this, you're gonna find a small tab that's gonna be on the wiring. Just gonna wanna push that tab, and you'll be able to pull the connector out. You're gonna wanna grab the T-connector on your wiring harness that has the yellow, brown, and red wires on it. And this is gonna be going to our driver's side. So we can see that they're gonna match up with our connectors on our vehicle. So I'm gonna go behind the panel here. And we're just gonna connect the two together that match up. I'm gonna make sure they lock into place, give them a quick tug, and then we can connect to the other side. So we can take the rest of our harness now I'm gonna go underneath the panel on the side here, and I'm gonna start working my way towards the passenger side. Just wanna make sure that the wires go all the way underneath the panel and they don't get stuck. So now that the majority of the harness is out from under the panel, we're gonna grab the green wire connectors. I'm just gonna loosely route it for right now. And then go behind our panel. And we're gonna find that same connector. It's gonna be right in the same spot right here at the back. So we can push in on that tab again to release the connector. Then we grab our green T connector and start making the connections. Now we're gonna have a white wire with a ring terminal coming off of it, and that's gonna be for our ground. Now fortunately for us, if we come back to our driver's side, right by where we made our connections, we're gonna have a factory ground right here. Now, if you don't wanna use this ground, they do provide you with a self-tapping screw that you can just screw into the sheet metal, but I'd rather take that bolt out than having to put another hole in the vehicle. So we'll take our 10 millimeter socket again, and we're gonna remove that bolt. Take our ground wire, and pass the bolt through, making sure that we put all of our other factory grounds back in place as well. Make sure to line up that alignment tab whenever you put the bolt back in. You don't have to worry about doing any damage to those grounds. So we're gonna need to find a spot to mount our converter box. Now they provide us with some double-sided foam tape. So I'm gonna take the cover off and apply it directly to my converter box. Just wanna make sure you push firmly and it's going to stick nice and good. Then we can take the backing off of the other side. I'm actually just going to stick this directly to the inside of the sheet metal here. That way it's out of the way, but it's still going to be nice and secure and we still have room to get to our jack over here. So we should have a black wire coming off our converter box with a bare end on it. Now this, we're gonna have to run up to a power source, which we're gonna use our battery. And they do give us a length of wire to run it up there. So I'm gonna go ahead and strip back one end. And we can take the included buck connector, slide it over the wire, and crimp it in place. And then we'll connect the other end of our buck connector to the bare wire coming out of the converter box. Now right behind the panel, right towards the back edge, on the driver's side, we're gonna have this plastic plug here. Now that's what we're gonna use to drop our wire down and we're gonna route our wire from underneath up to the battery. Just grab a flathead screwdriver and we can pop that plug out. But I do wanna mention you wanna keep a hold of it so that we can make a cut and reinstall it once we have the wire in place. So once we have the plug out, 
just going to pass all of that black wire down. And the easiest would be to pass it down until you can reach it underneath and then just start pulling it through, making sure it doesn't get tangled on anything. For that plug, I'm gonna take a pair of cutters and I'm just gonna cut a notch right about to the center so that my wire can pass through. And I'm gonna put it back in place with the wire right in the middle. Now, since I did have to cut it and it's not sealed anymore, I'm gonna come back with a little bit of silicone I'm gonna seal up that hole. That way I don't have to worry about any kind of moisture or even any fumes coming back into my car. Now, if you need some silicone, you can pick some up on our website using part number LT37467. So here's where the wire came out underneath the car. Now, like I mentioned before, we're gonna to have to route this wire up to the battery underneath the hood. You just wanna make sure you stay away from any heat sources like the exhaust or any moving parts like the suspension or steering components. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this up to the front and then I'll show you how I did it. So I started routing my wire, zip tying along the way. I went over the subframe, continuing towards the front. Then I actually cut over right by my fuel tank. Started routing it along some existing lines and brackets. Then one underneath this cover, routed it all the way to the front of it then I came down right here, right by the front subframe. Now we're gonna need to get this up to the engine bay so we can move up top and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. So underneath our hood, our battery is gonna be right here on our driver's side. So I'm gonna take a piece of airline tube that I had laying around and you can use whatever you have available, even if it is just a coat hanger. You just want something that's gonna keep its shape once you start pushing down. So I'm gonna start routing my airline tube down so I can meet up with my wire and then pull it back up. So my airline tube did come out right by my subframe here. So I'm gonna take my wire, I'm gonna put a little bit of it inside the airline tube to help secure it. I'm gonna come back with some electrical tape, put a little bit of tape on there so I won't lose it when I start pulling it up. Now we can go back up top and start pulling it through. Once we get our wire up, just wanna pull all the slack out, make sure that it's not getting stuck or tangled underneath the car or on its way up. And it never hurts to take a peek underneath and make sure that it didn't get wadded up and there's a bundle because you don't want to go driving down the road and get it ripped out. I'm just going to put a zip tie on this existing wiring here that we don't have to worry about my wiring falling back down underneath the engine compartment. So we're going to be connecting our wire to the positive post in our battery. But before we do, we're going to be installing our fuse holder. That way our circuit is going to be fuse protected. So we're gonna estimate about how much wire we need. Maybe give ourselves a little bit of extra, that way we can route it, make it look nice, and then we're gonna cut back the end. So we can cut our black wire that we ran. Then we're gonna strip back the end of it. And slide our butt connector over our wire and crimp it down. Then we can take our fuse holder and this is gonna be pre-stripped. So we just pull off the insulation on one end, put it into our buck connector, and crimp it in place. On the other end of our fuse holder, we're gonna pull the insulation off, exposing the bare wire. Then we can grab the included ring terminal in our kit, and we're gonna crimp that onto the end of it. So we can come to our positive battery post, we're gonna to have to remove the nut so we can install the ring terminal in place. So I'm gonna grab a 12 millimeter socket and remove that nut. Slide the ring terminal over and then reinstall the nut. Now we can take the provided 10 amp fuse and put it into our fuse holder. We can go back and clean up all our wires and put our trunk area back together. So we can start putting our panels back in place. Just wanna make sure all the clips line up and they all engage.
make sure the weather stripping is on the outside of the panel. I'm going to start replacing all the hardware. So you just want to make sure before you put the driver's side panel back in that your four pole wiring is coming out towards the center by the spare tire and it is underneath that panel and it's not going to interfere with anything. Now as far as the green wire that's running from the driver's side to the passenger side, I'm just going to take a little bit of electrical tape and I'm going to tape it to the inside of the threshold because once we put that plastic panel back on, it'll cover it back up. Now you can use electrical tape, packing tape, scotch tape, whatever you have available. You just want to make sure that you stay away from the clip points where the threshold's going to go back in or any other point where it may damage the wire or cause an issue to get it back in place. Just want to make sure it's secure and out of the way. Now we're going to put our threshold back. Just make sure all those clips go into place. Again, you just want to make sure that, that weather stripping is on the outside of the panel. So you may just have to pull it out a little bit where it goes into the right spot. Then we can put our floor covering back in. And with our floor covering, we can either leave our wire underneath to where it's by our spare tire. We can actually leave it right here and then put the covers back in place. That way our wires will be right here whenever we need them. Now our wiring is going to come with a dust cover. So we're just going to slip it over the end of our wiring. And before we connect it, we are going to need to test our wiring to make sure that everything is working properly. So I have my four pole tester here. And if you need one of these, you can pick one up on our website using part number I26. So we can plug it in. I'm going to grab an extra set of hands so they can run my lights and I can verify that everything is working properly. Can I get the headlights, please? Looks good. Left turn signal. Good. Right turn signal. Good. And finally the brakes. And if you wouldn't mind, brakes and both turn signals. All right, with everything looking good, we're ready to hook up to our trailer and hit the road. And then I'll finish up your look at the Kurt T-Connector vehicle wiring harness with four pole flat trailer connector, part number C56033 on our 2017 Nissan. Thanks for watching. Click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave us a comment if you have any questions.